it's very clear that food is a non-substitutable resource and ecosystem services. There's no species, including humans, that can survive without the, the services generated by ecosystems. Their ability to regulate climate, protect against UV radiation, regulate water supply, all these other impacts, we depend on these for our survival. So these two essential non-substitutable resources are in intense conflict. With current technologies and economic institutions, we can't have both. I'm Josh Farley. I'm an associate professor in community development and applied economics and a fellow here at the Gun Institute. A general issue I'm very, very interested in is this, what I consider the most serious dilemma we currently face, is that according to the major reports coming out, all of these things suggest that food is the biggest threat to our global ecosystem right now, so food production. And if you think of it as an economist, the marginal costs of producing food measured in the ecological damage are immeasurably high. You know, we could threaten critical ecosystem functions. On the other hand, we have a billion underfed people and an expected increase of two billion people in our population. So the marginal benefits of food production are immeasurably high. If we reduce food production enough not to threaten our ecosystems, we um, face a, a crisis of starvation and an economic threshold. And if we increase food production enough to meet our caloric needs and provide healthy diets, we pass an ecological threshold. I'm focusing on a very concrete example of this in Brazil, where in the Atlantic forest, about 93% gone. The ecologists say that if they don't restore about 30% of that total forest cover, the system is going to go into a spontaneous decline. It can't sustain enough ecosystem functions for the ecosystem to reproduce itself, to regenerate. And this ecosystem, about two-thirds of Brazil's population lives there, and they depend intensely on the ecosystem services generated. However, if the farmers reforest enough land to sustain the ecosystem, they would lose, in the, with the small family of farmers we're working with, 30 to 70 percent, in many cases, of their arable land and couldn't sustain their families out of poverty. So they faced these dire thresholds. I went down to Brazil to work with agroecologists who have been essentially doing the research, development, and dissemination of these agricultural practices that uh, have been shown to really increase farmer livelihood and to increase food production and restore ecosystem services. The problem is that the process is very, very slow. So they've reached 650, 700 farmers so far, but there's tens of thousands of farmers in their single state. And for this policy to have an impact, there's a very narrow time frame, or there's a kind of a window of opportunity in which you have to restore that forest before it loses too many species to be able to sustain itself. So I'm very interested in how do we develop the economic institutions that provide the resources for promoting this. I've helped advise several grad students. I've worked with my colleagues to get their message out, to publish the results, which I think sets us up in a better position to get funding. I would say that in the future, the goal is that my colleagues at their you know, slow pace, uh, it's gonna be difficult to have a profound impact on the ecosystem as a whole. What we need is a way to rethink the problem and capture the resources required to do this at a much broader scale. And there is where I think actually the conceptual ideas convincing policymakers um, that we need to rethink, we do, do this in an alternative way, um, can have an impact.